Hi folks, Photo Fisher here. Today I'll share with you how to tie a very simple and effective black ant pattern called the Cupboard Ant. This pattern was originally introduced to me by Mike Cruz, owner of Laughing Grizzly Fly Shop in Longmont, Colorado. I've taken a few modifications to it uh, for my liking, uh, but uh, this size 18 ant is my go-to ant up in the high country. The materials we'll use, a size 18 hook, a dry fly hook, some shelf lining material, preferably black, but any color will do, some black thread, some size 18 saddle hackle in grizzly or black. We'll make the visible posts out of Darlon. Here we have a very bright yellow chartreuse and a very fluorescent pink. And if you optionally want to put on uh, a, uh, a flying ant wing on the back, uh, we'll use some sort of sparkly, uh, shiny straight material. Uh, most anything will do for you from crystal flash to uh, some of this uh, flash fiber here. We'll prepare the body of the ant with this very unique material. It's common shelf liner that you can find at most any home supply store. Um, on the long ways, so from here up to here, we'll cut one strip. It doesn't matter if we leave these little ends or not right here. The key thing is, from here on out to pull it apart. So if I pull off this one piece right here from the second piece, it will expose what looks like antenna or legs. Well, if we do that and take one, two pillows and then pull it apart, we have an ant body. I have attached some black thread and covered the hook shank from the hook eye back to the hook bend. Now I'll bring that back to the middle. I'll take my ant body and I like to position it so that I can see the eye of the hook through the V of the first antenna on the front side. So I'll do it this way. secure it on in the middle of those two pillows. Next, I've clipped off some fibers from this straight shimmering material. You can choose any material that you want. I like very thin and flexible material. And I'll place that on top of the fly. And secure that in. You can see I haven't uh, selected too much material here, just enough to fan apart when it's dry. I've actually wetted it to help me apply it. Just to fan it apart and it'll create a wing uh, silhouette. I'll leave this now, I will not cut it. All right, so I'll just leave that for now. I've sized some size 18 hackle to go along with the hook. You can overhackle this since we're going to parachute it, and I'll tie that in next. Just like that. I've taken two strands of Darlon. The strand widths are easily separated, and nice widths perfect for this fly. And I've put them together and I'll tie them on top as well. I only use about three or four thread wraps to secure it right here. I'll grab the hackle posts and apply a, a few thread wraps around them 
just to secure them and make them stand upright. Now we'll wrap the hackle around the parachute in parachute style four or five times is all that is necessary. Some folks like to tie the hackle up the parachute and then wrap down. For this smaller fly, size 18 or smaller, it's really not necessary. All we're using this hackle for to provide a little bit of silhouette of legs and to provide some extra flotation on top, just like a dry fly. I tie it off by bringing the hackle stem downward, pull back the head, and apply a few wraps. I carefully grab the feather Keep the thread out of the way behind my finger, snip the feather off, and tie off. Now we'll trim the excess material to length. That fly is complete. Doesn't look like much, but this ant pattern is highly effective in the high country here in Colorado. Hope you enjoyed this little video on some of the flies I use in the high country.